I had an actual service. Today's video is a little different. At the moment, I'm in Wales and I took the opportunity to visit a place called Castel Henlis, which is a recreation of an Iron Age hill fort. I was allowed to video all the stuff I videoed and I did have permission to do the videoing. I pay for my own ticket so this isn't sponsored in any way and you do have to pre-book if you go on an event day so if you're thinking about visiting the place that's something that you need to consider in advance. It is of course a public event so I couldn't video any members of the public who hadn't given permission for me to video them which means that I was very limited in what I could actually film. On the day that I went they had an event on which is to celebrate the bringing in of the harvest. I'll put the name of it up on the screen because I can't remember it right now. I had a really awesome day there and the staff were excellent and extremely helpful. They let me video a whole load of stuff so that I can show it to you all. So let's get started. So the first and most obvious thing about an Iron Age hill fort is the Iron Age buildings. They were absolutely great to look at and absolutely great to go inside. Um, some of them were huge, much bigger than I would have expected. As part of the festival day event, they had loads of cool events on that you could go to. So I tried to go to as many of them as I could with the camera, um, but I didn't manage to go to all of them. The ones that I didn't manage to go to were face painting. They were doing Celtic face painting, which was quite cool and I would have liked to have done that, but the queue was enormous, so I didn't wait for it. But as far as I know, they have that on most of the time anyway so if you go on a non-festival day you should be able to go to that. They also had candle making which was really quite cool so I made myself a wax candle. Here's the video. All you're going to do is fold it into the end of the sheet so you want one end so it's sticking out the other end so it's flush or flat with the very bottom so only one end should be sticking out. So the idea is you should have one little lip at the bottom. As you can see where I've got this lip it's just sort of sat in there. And then with the wick closest to you all you are going to do is roll the wick into the candle. The, way I, the reason I say do it closest to you is what I usually do is with my fingers on the bit I'm rolling and my hand to steady it, just roll it away from myself. This is commercially prepared beeswax. So these are actually foundation sheets for modern hives. Um, they come in pieces, basically the size of about four of these together. And they're what you put in modern hives for the bees to build their cells on to put the honey in. However, once they've been used, obviously you're taking the honey out. The honey is the bit that we really want these days. You've got all this wax left over, so why not either recycle it into new ones of these or melt it down and make candles that you pour into moulds. Either is acceptable. This is a lot easier to do out here though. Um, need an electric hob really to do it the other way. And I will be testing out the candle later to see if it works and I'll make sure I video that or put it at the end of the video or something. I did have a good little chat with their bard. He had lots of cool stuff. So here's the clip of what I filmed about that. Well. This is a Carnix. It is the Celtic Warhorn par excellence. It is probably the most enigmatic and famous of ancient Celtic instruments. And they would play it in times of war 
but also in times of peace. So it would be held aloft, like so. Oh. <laughs> If you can imagine warriors in groups of four or five big burly men standing on top of a hill at a time, that's a bit more like what it would be. Oh, we're all playing this. All playing multiple carnesies. That would be deafening. Mm. Uh, it would be deafening, they were used for intimidation, but they were also used for signalling and for letting the army know. Attack! Retreat! Take prisoners! Take no prisoners! So would there be like different tunes for different... Um, Presumably so, we think so. If you come a little closer for a minute, okay. just turn around for a minute, trust me, put it on your shoulder there, ready to take the weight a little bit? Yeah. played ceremonially. So also it wasn't necessarily only played in times of war, it was also played in times of peace. So you can start walking forward with it. Like that, yeah. see? They also had slingshots. That was really aimed at smaller children. So they were using nice safe ammo that was made out of flour mixed with water so that it was sort of squishy and it couldn't hurt anyone when they were hit. For the inevitability that slingshots have a habit of throwing things straight upwards or behind you. But I did have a go and it was fun. And the guy who was explaining how to do this was actually really good. There is a loop on these slings, okay? You want to try and copy my hand. This loop is going to sit over one of these fingers. Yeah, yeah everyone else has got it. Fantastic. This second piece, same hand. I want it to sit over this finger. We're going to pinch it in there, okay? That's about right. This is the bit that's going to come out of the hand. We are going to be flicking this out. And once you've got your grip, from there it's easy. There's one thing you need to do now and that is to let go. Yeah. You want to let go and hopefully point in the right direction. Okay, so we're going to be going there. It's all a bounce into it. I never do it that way around. Give me some more ammo. Let's do that again. So we want to be pointing at the target. Just like that. You see my arm is pointed right at the guy and that's what's hit. If, when I let go, I'm pointing behind me, that is where it's going to go. And that is advice as much for you lot as it is for them. Yeah. A lot of these shots don't go where you anticipate them. Yeah. So, you don't need too much of this. It's just adding power. Don't worry about that. All looking, swing and release. That's all we need, yeah? One swing, let go. Hopefully at the target, you should be fine. Any place like that wouldn't be complete without a gift shop and cafe. So they do have a gift shop and they do have a cafe. The gift shop sells quite a lot of cool things. Now on a side note, I did buy one of the swords because while I've been on holiday I've been practicing Living Anachronism Sword Flourishing Tutorial, which I'll link. I made this because I didn't bring a sword with me on holiday to practice with and then when I went to the Iron Age Fort in the gift shop they were selling these so I got one of these. They are exactly the same size, that is actually an amazing coincidence. 
there will be a video on this at some point in the future. So the final thing is of course, because it's a festival day, they do the show at the end, which has loads of cool stuff to entertain children. And the grand finale of the show is that they burn the wicker man. I really enjoyed that because it was very well done. But unfortunately I couldn't video all of it because they involve children quite a lot and I can't video members of the public without permission. But the bits of it that I did video, I'll show for you. I hope you enjoyed this, something a bit different. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. As you can imagine, uh, warriors in group dogs. Bye. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. Did it still go in? As you can imagine, oh, warriors. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Editing is a I thing. I know you're going to edit it out. Yeah. <laughs>